Hey, what is going on guys? Today we're going to be taking a look at something different and something different is always fun and exciting. So this is a set of Metal Slug X kits from the game Metal Slug X. This is from a Chinese company called Xinxi Hobby, I believe is the name of it. So these are Metal Slug X miniature model kits. There's the set of them in here. So we're going to take a look at all of them here in the set. But before we get into it, just to let you guys know, we are going to be carrying this at USA Gundam Store, so if you want to check this out, the link will be down in the video description below. Check this out on USA Gundam Store and everything else there on the store as well, too. You guys can use my coupon code there as well. Also, Zakurilius10 to save 10% off everything there on the site. That's also down in the video description below. I've never actually played a Metal Slug. It was never something that I was really into, but these kits do look pretty interesting, so let's go ahead and check them out. So all right, starting with the box here. Now, when I got this box in, it looks like it's just like using these low res kind of images, which are maybe like some background images from the game or something uh, on the front of the box. And so I had to question if this was actually even a legit release or some sort of bootleg or something like that. But no, it is actually a legitimate uh, licensed release. So fear not. Uh, in here, we've got this set of six different model kits. The packaging on these looks a lot nicer. It's just this external packaging is just a, a bit goofy, I know, with that. So let's go ahead and actually start with the first one, I guess, not with the third one in the line. So for this first one here, we have the SV0012 Metal Slug here. This is obviously from SNK, and this is the model kit uh, company that produces these. So not only are you going to get a kit of the Metal Slug, we also have a little figure here, which I believe is just going to be in resin, a little resin figure of a different character in each of the kits as well, too. So you have, again, here on the front, just this nice illustration of the tank, in this case, around on the sides of the box. Just some information there over on this side. Here we have a look at all the different model kits in the line. One, two, three, four, five six uh seven maybe it's maybe not that one i think oh uh, yeah we do have that one. Oh, okay sorry it looks like oh okay 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 okay, okay. sorry uh so here's one two three four five six this one is made from parts from each of the kits so if you get all of the kits in the set then you can then eventually make this one here as well too which is this sort of like helmet tank i guess I think that's what that's saying about this on here. That's what I'm going to guess anyway. But anyway, so that's it just on the top and the bottom of the box there. Just another look at, I guess this is a built model of that. So built and painted or looks like, yeah, basically maybe. Let's go ahead and get it opened up in here. So yeah, like for example, here would be the top of that part. So yeah, you'll have to take pieces from each of the sets. Obviously, if you're buying the box set, you have all the parts in there. You don't need to worry about collecting all the different ones. So we'll have some different molded parts in here. We'll take a look at all the runners here in just a second. Underneath all of that, we do have our little character figure here. Now, I want to take this out because it seems this is actually molded in plastic, not in resin. So that, I guess, if you're used to working with plastic, that makes it a little bit easier to work with. Uh, and the detail on it looks really nice. They're kind of stupid looking, in my opinion, the whole kind of SD soldier looking thing. I'm not really too into it, but I mean, the detail on them does look really nice. There's that. We also have a set of water slide decals included here as well, including water slide decals for the character's eyes. That's nice. And then these are really strange. These are actually just regular sticker decals as far as I can tell. Although the paper makes it look like they're dry transfers at first, but I think these are just regular stickers. And then we have our instruction manual here, which is going to have the Metal Slug X logo there at the top. And then just like some, uh, just another image down here, like as if it's like from in-game. On the back side, a look at the contents, the different runners, a couple of parts that are not on the runners, the figure and the decals. On the inside here, we've also got a color guide for the kit and the character figure as well too. So you've got all that listed in, in Chinese and in English. And then over here, a guide for creating that uh, extra tank which shows you where all the different parts come. So from set one, you got this part from set two, you got these parts and I guess the decals from set three, set four, set five, set six, you got all the different parts there for making that. So it's just a breakdown of that and then fold it open to the inside is where we got all the instructions for this particular kit. So you can see they're just gonna be all here. Laid out for you guys, it looks pretty standard for the instructions for that, all good and well. So for our runners, here is runner A01 in this light blue color, and then A02 also in the light blue color for all of those parts. Then we've got runner KA here in black for our tank treads and a few other little black parts. And these loose parts here which look to be for like the main uh, turret part or on the top of the tank, and then for the main top half of the body of the tank it looks like. And then here is that part for the top of the final tank there. We'll set that to the side for a moment and move on to the second kit in the line. So most of everything what's on the box here going to be basically the same. You got the same image there on the side and on the top, same kind of thing, just a photograph of the kit there for your reference. But on the front, you got a cool image there, illustration image of the model kit. In this case, it's, it's the slug flyer and then this little guy there with the, what is that? 
some kind of rifle anyway. So let's just get it opened up. And again, the contents all gonna be basically pretty similar as well too. We'll take a look at the runners here in a second. In this case, a couple more pieces utilized here for the character figure. You've got one for each arm and then one piece for the backpack and then the main body piece there like that. And we've got our water side decals here as well too and kind of interestingly instead of decals for the eyes you've got decals for the sunglasses and eyebrows there it's kind of funny and then we've got our sticker versions of those in here as well and we've also got stickers here for the version of the water side decals which are included with the parts for the combined tank so it's going to be located here there's the water slides for that and then our parts for that which we'll keep out separate on the instruction manual here, just the same thing there on the top, the slug flyer on the back, the look at our contents. On the inside, we've got our color guide there on this side, and then the same instructions over here on this side for making the uh, space tank is what that one's called, that's the name of that. And then once again on the inside, our constructions for putting together the slug flyer here. So there's all that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the runners. Runner B01 here in this dark green color gonna be the main halves of the plane. Runner B02 here going to be our wing parts and also the cockpit seat there and a couple of little detail parts. And then Runner B03, some more parts there in that dark green color. And then once again, our KB runner here is in black for some little black detail parts. We've also got this one little yellow piece here and this clear part for the canopy. All right, next up, kit number three is the shoe here with this really weird, again, just a really weird looking character there, but anyway. It's a pretty big, massive tank in this case. It's gonna be bigger, but on that side, I don't think the kit necessarily is gonna be all that much larger, but there you go. On the end, you gotta look at the kit all built and painted there. Same image here on this side. Same thing basically there on that side. Let's go ahead and get this opened up. And I can see, yeah, we got a couple of pretty big parts there, it looks like, for this. If we dig down through here, we can find our weird, long-haired, big-nose, bearded guy here, and you've got a couple of parts there for that. These parts fit on there, so apparently he's like holding a pair of shorts in front of him or something. I don't know really. <laughs> again, okay. Anyway, again, we've got a set of water side decals and a sticker versions of those if you prefer. And our standard instruction manual here. you got the shoe down there at the bottom. Uh, contents here on the back, on the inside. You've got your color list there in Chinese and English. And then on the inside, our instructions for putting together the shoe and everything. All right. For the runners here, we've got runner C01 here in this brown color. And runner LC is here in this kind of darker red. It looks very nice for a couple of larger pieces there. Runner KC is once again going to be our parts here in black for the tank treads and a couple of little detail parts on there. And we've got some bigger loose pieces here in brown, a couple of those. And a couple more here, so just make sure you're keeping track of everything. And then our piece here that you'll need for the space tank. Again, these are all just molded in this uh, kind of off-white cream color, so it's easy to tell which ones are for what. All right, then, so kit number four here is the Melty Honey here. It's quite an interesting look. I like the little missile shooting out of the front of that. That's pretty cool, with a little soldier there riding up on top of it. So again, we just kind of got the same look around on the sides of that. Very spiky on the front of the kit. Around here on the inside. Take a look at all the parts here in a second. Here are the parts for our little character figure. You got one for the main body, one for the backpack, one for the head, and then one piece each for each of the arms there. Our water side decals, including a couple there for the character's eyes, and then some sticker decals again there if you prefer on a different type of sticker paper this time, I'm noticing. And so here is our part for the space tank, this little underside part there. Runner D01 is gonna be some parts here in a lighter blue color. Runner D02, some more of those. And again, some really nice detail on these parts, I should say. Runner KF01 here for a couple pieces in black, and then KD01 for a couple more little black pieces. A couple more pieces here for the main body of the tank. And then one piece there in yellow, and one piece here in a kind of olive green kind of color. Kit number five then here is this really interesting tall tank. It's called the Saburai. It's got there and looks like a soldier carrying a little shield there for our character figure for this one. So there's a look at that on both sides. On inside here, you can see this one's gonna be molded. Uh, the main color is gonna be in that dark green color like you see for how it looks on the box art. And again, it looks like a few pieces for our character figure here. So there's the one for the face. And here's the one for the body and the backpack 
here, which does look pretty similar to the last one. And then the parts here for the arm holding the pistol and the other arm holding the shield there. So that's pretty interesting. Got our water slide decals there, including ones there for the eyes and these big red markings for the big red stripe that it's got on it. Uh, and then the sticker versions of those. And the instruction manual here with the saburai down there at the bottom. And on the inside is our parts list or color list. Well, the parts list is, uh, let's see, where is that? Oh, that's here, the contents, right? We got the parts list. And then we do also have the color list there uh, as well for your reference. And just again, on the inside, the instructions for how that all goes together. For the runners, here is runner E01 for a couple of pieces there in that dark green color. Runner GE02 is a couple of small pieces and there's a big piece there for like uh, holding the tank treads. And here's our two big main halves of the main body of the tank. Our, another single piece here for the bottom side of that. Runner KE in black gonna be our tank treads there. Then we got a few pieces there in white for like the X logo on it and then the couple of yellow pieces there as well too. And for the space tank, we've got a couple of these smaller detail parts that are gonna be going around on that included with this set. And finally, last but not least, is the Land Seek. This truck here with a soldier guy with a big bazooka on his arm, that does look pretty cool. Uh, again, on the top and bottom, you just got a photograph there of how that looks. So let's get this popped open as well. Underneath all of that, we've got, let's see, let's just take a look at this since they fell out first. Here's the water slide decal sheet for this kit. Very small, just a couple of decals there, including ones for the eyes. And then the stickers as well, just gonna be the one, two little stickers there for this. Here are our character figure parts. And again, the main body and backpack, this, this looks the same like we've seen with a couple of them. I believe this part is the same. And just this part's different, the arms and the face just being slightly different between a couple of the different kits. So there's the big bazooka that he's holding and the face being, I guess, probably slightly different. In this set we also do have the character figure here for the space tank as well too so you'll have just basically the head and the arms the body I guess I should say of that. And then in our instruction manual here we've got the land seek there at the bottom on the back side look at our contents on the inside look at the painting guide there for that and the character figure as well too the painting guide there for that. Also the construction for the space tank here is going to remind me that this set also comes with the uh, treads here for the space tank as well too, so we'll have those there in black. Runner F01 here in this light blue color are going to be the main body of the truck and then some other smaller parts there. You got a few other separate pieces here molded in light blue so you can see is the kind of wood grain and a shovel molded into the side of this part there that's kind of cool and then, then the main part there and then the main kind of front part of that as well too. Again nice detail on these though. You got a couple of parts here in this light, uh, light army green color. And some black parts there for the tank treads and for the tires and a couple other small little pieces there as well on runner KF02 and KF01. Alright guys, so that is it for the unboxing. Let me go ahead and get these built up and then we'll see how they look. Alright guys, so we'll go through these in order starting off with the first one, the metal slug. They're all built up. It does look very nice, very cute and actually pretty solid. There was a few pieces, you know, and as it's going together I was thinking, oh, I'm not sure how solid this is actually going to all hold together. But once you got everything together it does, uh, the, the solid connection there is pretty nice. As you can see, I didn't put all of the stickers on, just a couple of the stickers basically, and that's what I've done with uh, a bunch of these is just kind of put the stickers on like halfway so you guys can see how some of the stickers are gonna look on there and then how it looks just completely uh, without the stickers on there. I think the, they are pretty nicely detailed for the size as well too. I mean, if you guys wanna put in some work on them, I think these would look really, really nice once they're all painted up. But even if you don't wanna paint them up, you know, just wanna do a little bit of panel lining just to bring out some of the details even more so. Throw some uh, top coat on there. I think they would still be looking nice. Maybe just paint, a, just like hand paint in a couple of the details, things like that. Uh, they'd still be looking pretty nice just straight out the box. But I mean, very cute, very small too as well too. They're not very big, but that should also be basically expected by the size of the box. I mean, you guys saw the boxes are not that big, big either. As for a size comparison, let me just show you guys this compared with your average HG144 scale Gundam kit for reference and they're all going to be about the same size so I'll just only show you a size comparison here for the metal slug but as you can see going to be pretty small and here is your little character figure included again just roughly assembled but obviously needs some paint on that nothing's like really color accurate so definitely going to want to do some painting on that if you're up for it. But as for the kit itself, just to show you about like what moves on it, not really a whole lot, really kind of these gun barrels can rotate, although that doesn't really seem like it's meant to be articulation, it's just the fact of how they're plugged into there. You can also adjust the angle of these up and down a little bit, but again, that's just kind of kind of pop them out if you're not too careful with that. So I mean, just adjust that as you need. And then also the antennas up on the top, you can adjust the angle of those, but again, it's not really that much of a thing. Yeah, I think basically these are not really meant to be articulated or any sort of like uh, thing where you can change the pose of them or anything, because they're like, what's gonna, what are you gonna 
to pose with this really. I mean, that's just kind of, they are what they are, just exactly how they are. They do also all have this uh, hard point attachment there underneath for plugging this onto an action base if you wanted to actually. So if you wanted to do something like this, make it look like it's jumping or flying through the air or something, you could do that having it up on action base. So it's kind of cool. I mean, just you could easily just drill a hole there yourself, but it saves you the trouble of doing that, I suppose. But like I said, some nice detail. You have some seam lines on there, of course, between like the main halves of this top part, but you can get rid of that relatively easily, I would think. And otherwise, I mean, like I said, pretty good fit. So you can see gaps between things here and there, but I think just for the design of the kit, that's not too distracting. I mean, it's not like a, it doesn't look unusual. And especially if once, once you get this all painted up, I think it's gonna look totally fine as well too. But there is the metal slug anyway, it's very cool. Let's go ahead and then move on to the second kit, the Slug Flyer, and again, looks very cool, especially with that clear canopy piece. You got a couple of stickers that go over the top of the canopy to kind of make the, I don't know, parts of that. The little yellow bit there on the tail also gives you a nice bit of color. And again, I put some of the stickers on here, as you can see, and those are gonna be looking kind of fine. As far as like the stickers go, I mean, they, they do stick on there pretty well and they're fine kind of just out the box, but you're probably gonna to want to just hand paint some of those details in. Uh, instead of using, instead of relying on the stickers. This one again lo does look pretty cool, basically still has the same issues of the big seam line there right on the nose, most notably, but then a lot of nice detail around everywhere else too, especially underneath as, one, so, as well. So this one might be one that you're definitely gonna wanna put up on an action base, but then I guess having the landing gear down would be kind of weird if you've got it looking like it's flying with the landing gear deployed, maybe a bit strange. And then real quick for this one as well too, there is your character figure uh, again, Nicely detailed. Again, the detail on this does look really cool. You have your point where you can plug this up on an action base. You have these uh, pieces of landing gear down here and then also up underneath the wing. Those can't like close up. There's no transforming this into like a just regular flight mode. You can't close this back up and close these off. Because basically if you take these off and you just have this hollow bit there in the wing, then I guess you could like very easily plug that up, I suppose. And for this front one as well too, I mean, you could just pull that off and then just make a new piece to fit over the front of that. So I mean, with some modification, you could make it uh, without the landing gear there. But again, basically the kit doesn't really have much articulation. These actually don't move on it this time. You have these little bits over here on the side, which I think will move, right, a little bit. Yeah, those moved a little bit forward and back those little things on the side there. And that's kind of really basically about it. Not much moves. You have seam lines, like I mentioned, right out there on the front of the nose, on um, these bits underneath the wings as well too, some seam lines, but otherwise just some nice detail lines around on the kit. So again, you can tell just how nice this is gonna look once it's all painted, but up inside of here as well too. You do have a lot of nice detail inside the cockpit there also that you can paint that up, that'd look nice. But all right, then moving on to the shoe, which is certainly one of the bigger ones in this line. It's, you know, slightly bigger. It's not still not that big though. But again, I went for like kind of half stickers on this just so you guys can see that it's basically the details of the stickers is all molded on there. So it should be easy enough to paint in all those details and everything on there easy enough. Again, you got some nice details around on the kits everywhere. Uh, some pretty good color separation on this with the bits of red and uh, the dark brownish colors. They're looking pretty nice, even just straight out the box. Again, if you were just as paint in a few of the details, give this a good panel line wash and put some matte top coat on there. It's gonna be looking pretty good just straight out of the box even without fully painting the thing. But I mean, just imagine putting these in like little vignettes, something with like some terrain and like actually fully painting them up and weathering everything. I think these would actually look quite cool if you're into that sort of thing as well too. But, but let's go ahead and take a closer look. Now this one does have a few loose parts and that these parts here on the back tend to fall out kind of easily, especially that one there as you can see. So again, a lot of these bits you're gonna wanna glue because they don't move around or anything anyway. That said, these ones here on the front, these little turrets do move a little bit side to side so you can kind of reposition those if you want. And also the main cannon here on the top can also be moved side to side. So kind of, that's not that a lot of articulation, but kind of the most articulation, it seems like probably out of uh, the lot of these. So this one is definitely really nice. You got this kind of piece here on the back with that like missile standing up there like that. Some really nice detail here on the top. And again, up underneath, this one actually does not have a hard point on there, but again, you could just uh, drill a hole into there if you wanted to have this flying. Although I guess maybe this one just doesn't really do much flying in the game. So maybe that's why it doesn't have that. And of course our little character figure here with this one looking just very odd and silly. This long hair, long beard guy holding a pair of shorts or something. I don't know again what the significance of, of, of that is, but I'm guessing that's something related to the game. But all right, up next we've got the Melty Honey, which again is a pretty cool little vehicle here with all the big massive spikes there on the front of it. Uh, and this one as well does have a couple of little loose parts on there that you're gonna have to be careful with. Again, you're gonna probably 
probably just gonna want to glue but for the most part again really nice detail on that especially like the interior part this one would be really cool to actually have one of your little character figures standing up inside of there would definitely be a cool look for this one whereas you can't really do that with some of the other ones which is kind of nice about this particular kit in the line but again this one as well too gonna be a little bit smaller compared to like the shoe which we just took a look at which was one of the bigger ones this is definitely one of the smaller ones uh, that said it does have a lot of nice detail on there and just real quick for the character figure, basically I was noticing that the 4th, 5th, and 6th character figures basically all seem to be variants of one another. So you got kind of like the same body, but then like the face and the arms will be a little bit different. So here's this one, basically just a shouting guy pointing a finger wearing a backpack. And as for the kit itself, the biggest problem I'm having is that these uh, missile pods there, those parts don't really fit in there very well, so they just kind of are just kind of resting there at the moment because they meant to just plug right onto those pegs there, but for some reason they don't want to plug onto there, so I think probably what I would have to do is just kind of like modify that to be able to just glue those down into there. Uh, but you got some nice detail inside there with that like little control panel there. Again, big seam line on that part, but it, some texture down there for like the floor of the inside of that. And then the, the spike parts on the front there do look pretty cool. The stickers wrapped around there and on the side here. Some nice details here around on the back side part there as well, up underneath. Again, no uh, hard point for this one, so I guess I thought it was on all of them, but I guess on a couple of them they don't have the uh, hard point for plugging it onto an action base there. The connection of this front part is not that strong, so don't hold the kit by this front part there like I was doing. But anyway, yes, some nice detail up underneath there that if you wanted to add a, just drill a hole in there to set this up onto an action base or something, you could do that. All right, up next is certainly the tallest one of the bunch. It's the Sarubia, which uh, is also the most uncomfortably Nazi aesthetic single one, it seems like. Uh, but uh, hopefully this video won't get dinged by YouTube for me saying that. Anyway, uh, it's uh, still a cool design though. I mean, it's certainly a unique design with this being this very tall tank and it's certainly kind of the most uh, different looking of the tanks and or unconventional looking tank. Seems like the kind of thing if they actually fire that massive cannon that the whole thing would just fall backwards. And I don't know, maybe that's something that actually happens in the game as well too. It could very well be. Again, I'm not any familiar with the game, familiarity with the game. But again, it is a very unique design. Certainly the stickers on there do actually work pretty well, especially with like the big red stickers and the black stickers for the X's on the side there. Uh, do actually fit on there pretty well, stick on there pretty well, and uh, you know, do look, you know, Pretty good if you're not gonna be actually painting the kit. You got the yellow pieces there, so those aren't stickers, but actually yellow pieces there for the front and the back. And then basically little circle stickers for the lights on the front and at the top there as well too. But overall, just for its uniqueness, this one is probably one of the most interesting kits in the bunch, I think, in my opinion. But also, as you may expect, basically nothing moves on this. It's just kind of one big solid chunk. Uh, this antenna piece here at the top I have found to be a little bit loose. So again, just make sure you glue that in, make sure that doesn't get lost anywhere. But aside from the stickers that I mentioned and the lights here and there, you also have these black stickers which help to fill in these black bits. They would also look really nice, but of course you could easily just paint that in with a little bit of black paint, easy enough to do. Again, it's nice details around the bottom. I haven't really mentioned this on any of the kits, but just the, the tank treads on all of them do all look really nice. You, again, if you paint those in, and especially add some weathering in there, those are gonna look really super cool. This one's got a big massive seam line down the front and back of that, but I feel like, especially on this lower part, it's just kind of meant to look like a, a separated armor panel detail there, but in the, the middle section there, you might wanna just get rid of that seam line there. Otherwise, still, again, very cool design. And here we have our character figure, which like I said, is basically the same body. Uh, this one has a little antenna there on the backpack and a pistol in the hand, and then obviously the big shield over here on this side. Now this shield is also kind of tends to fall off pretty easily, but you might want to just glue that on there to make sure you got that on there without falling off. And then up next we've got the Land Seek, which is unique of course in the fact that it's like half tank, half truck. I'm sure there's a specific word for that, I, I just don't know. It's, this is not the, this is kind of subject material, it's not my forte. And again, no experience with the game. But just from a builder's perspective, if you're building this set, this one is nice. That It's a little bit different, it's not fully tank, it's just more of a truck with some tank treads on it. Again, some really nice detail along those back parts, especially like the parts that are meant to look like wood. You've got like all the green detail there, so once that's painted and like all painted up like wood it's gonna look very convincing it looks nice and you've got like the kind of tarp part over the top and there's like the tarp uh, rolled up tarps there on the back there as well too so it all does look really quite nice for this one really nicely detailed and basically no seam lines on this one which is nice you don't have to worry about that it's one where you can just kind of put it together paint it up and it'll be very simple to do and again with this one the character figure is basically just a variant where you just got the arm and the bazooka for him there and again just the same backpack just the face 
just a little bit different expression basically is kind of the whole thing but again these character figures not really for me but there's that and the really great thing about the Land Seeker is it just it is really, I mean, they're all really nicely detailed, but this one is especially nicely de detailed. It seems like just from the perspective of just it being a little bit different. So it's very, you got a lot of nice, just really nice fine detail on there. Uh, even on the inside, you got that wood grain uh, molded in there and like little crates up inside. So once this is painted up, like I said, I think it's going to be looking really, really nice. You can actually fold down the front of that like that if you wanted to. And inside there, you can see you got a steering wheel and actually a stick shift inside there as well too. A shifter is there also in the center. You could completely omit this part I guess while we're on the topic of me having to put this back on there. You could just omit that and have it just be like that or keep this part up here like so. But finally of course that leads us to the space tank which you can make using uh, a few parts along the way from each of the kits. Then you can put that all together here to make the space tank which honestly <laughs> this the top just looks a lot more like a safari hat to me than like a UFO. I mean I get that it's supposed to look like a UFO but it just it looks like a safari hat with a big X logo on the front of it as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the bottom half of it interestingly is basically the exact same as the Cerubia so again I, I'm guessing they're related in the game as they both have like the X logo they're both sharing that and with the bottom half of the tank again being the same so I'm guessing they're related but so basically it's just replacing the top the tall top half of that with this sort of UFO there. Now we've got our character figure here for this one as well too which is kind of one of the more interesting ones in that's just kind of got this uh, sort of a big boss sort of looking guy here I'm sure it's not at all but that's just the connection that I'm making here with the tank though you can actually have this guy in there if you open up the top the hatch opens up on the top there and it's not going to stand very well but you can have him standing inside there you might want to actually like uh, pin him pin his foot to the inside there because otherwise I'm kind of having trouble actually getting him to stand up but if you sort it out you can have him standing up there with the hatch open in the top of the tank there like that otherwise that just closes down and it also has a little bit of trouble staying closed you kind of have to get it in there just right to get that to be closed up but otherwise like I said the whole bottom half is just basically the same thing taken from the other kit except you have that new little piece up in there as well too which does sort of look like it's smiling so it adds to the whole kind of thing how I said this looks like a hat now it looks like a hat with like a tank face on there as well too the eyes and the smiling face so I don't know is that just me or are you guys also seeing that but well, there you have it guys, it's a pretty interesting line and a set of seven kits is a nice set and they're not all that big if there's something that you want to just put a little bit more work onto some than the others, you know, maybe just snap build the whole set and then really, you know, put everything into a, just a couple of them or something I think could be a fun project or even if you want to go ham on all of the seven, I think it would take you a little bit longer, of course, but I think there's a lot that you could do with them, even like making them into a set of like make a little vignette for each of them. Uh, they would make for a really cool set. If you're a big Metal Slug fan, I mean, then definitely go for it. That said, even if you're not that big into Metal Slug, even if you're just into just this sort of type, a little bit more military models, obviously these are kind of uh, cartoonified a little bit, a little bit, and maybe not so realistic, but I mean, they're kind of similar anyway. They're close to being somewhat realistic in their designs anyway, right? So if that's the kind of thing you're into, definitely check these out. They're a lot of fun, very simple to build as well too and a lot of opportunity there for you guys to really make them shine. So let me know your guys' thoughts on these kits down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. As always, guys, really appreciate that. And until next time, hope you guys are all having a great day. I'll see you all later. Bye, guys.